Demon Driver here. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to everybody. Hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you for joining me tonight. And tonight we're gonna to tackle a very, very serious question, a huge question and a big answer. And I hope it helps you in your RC builds and all the RC aircraft that you have. And uh, there's one general problem and one general conundrum and question that people always ask me in RC and on RC groups here on YouTube. Instagram, all over the place, I get this one question over and over and over and over and over again. How do I determine the CG on my RC airliner or RC fighter jet or, you know, even a tail dragger? How do I determine the CG? Uh, just the other day on Instagram, a individual in the UK who had bought a Windrider 737 had asked me, how do I find the CG on this airplane? And I had a quick, simple answer for him, and I call it the Demon Driver CG Method. And it's it's really simple, and it, it especially works for swept wing aircraft. It really comes in handy. And uh, let me jump right into it. So this is called the Demon Driver CG Method. Um, I don't know if I came up with it, but it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. If you have any swept wing aircraft that exists in real life, I'm going to show you how to determine the CG without mathematics, without really anything. All you need are the basic plans of that airplane if it exists in real life. I will show you right now in this video how to determine the CG and do it successfully, and you'll have a successful maiden every time, whether it's a fighter jet, airliner, tail dragger, straight wing, whatever. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, we have before us a Convair 990, landing gears extended. Now, the key to the Demon Driver CG method is exactly that, the landing gear. The landing gear have to be within a very narrow range of the CG, and they always have to be aft of the CG point on any given swept wing aircraft. Now, let's say, for instance, the CG was too far aft. If the CG was too far aft, the elevators and stabilizer, flying tail, would never be able to exert enough downward aerodynamic force to enable the plane to get a angle up or angle of attack upward, positive angle attack, attack to gain, to have the uh, airfoil of the main wings to move upward like this to be able to lift off. Vice versa, if the CG was too far forward, the plane would always be tail heavy on the ground and she'd always fall back. So, the CG can only be in a very narrow range on any given aircraft and it all has to do with the CG and the landing gear. Look at the landing gear as a fulcrum, right? The elevators or stabilizer is the effort and the forward area of the aircraft before or in front of the CG is the load, right? And that's the key. That is the key, all right? The key is just ahead of the landing gear, all right? Let's take a look at this uh, Lufthansa A321 on its takeoff roll. Here's a Lufthansa A321 on her takeoff roll. She gets up to V1, then right after that V2, rotation, the elevators, stabilizer, the leading edge moves down, the rear edge moves up. Okay, it's, exa it's exerting a downward aerodynamic pressure on the tail section, pushing the tail down, pushing the nose up, and giving the main airfoil an upward positive angle of attack, allowing the plane to achieve liftoff and... Okay, let's take the 737 MAX 7. Here is how you determine the CG. It's really easy, very straightforward. First thing you do 
is you look at you get some plans like this get a side view get the top view of the wings whatever you want to do but the side view is very straightforward very easy take the main tire okay superimpose a second tire in front of the first of the actual main landing gear just like that now draw a box from the center hub of that second tire to the front of the tire make a box the center of that box is the CG of this 737 MAX 7 or any 737 variant from the 737 100 all the way up to the MAX 8 7, 8, 9, 10, it's the same theory. That's all you have to do. Very straightforward. And that is the CG. And it will work for you every time. Let's look at the A321. A320, 18, 19, doesn't matter. Again, there's your main landing gear. Superimpose a second landing gear tire in front of the first one. Draw a box from the center of the wheel hub to the actual forward, you know, front of the tire. Make a box. Draw a line down the center of that box, and that is the CG of your Airbus A321. It doesn't matter. Do the same thing with any plane. It's the same thing. Take a, let's say, a 787. It's the same thing again, but it's a little bit modified because of a wheel truck. Any airliner with a wheel truck, it changes a little bit. And here's what you do. Again, superimpose a second wheel truck ahead of the main wheel truck on the 787. Now, you draw a line through the main strut of the superimposed landing gear, and that's the CG on your 787. The same thing will work on an A330, an A300, a 757. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the same exact theory. It will work for you every time. The CG and the landing gear are closely wrapped together. They are they're intertwined. Aircraft engineers design these planes so that the landing gear can't be either too far aft or too far forward of the CG. It's crucial. It's the only way the plane can gain, can gain liftoff and rotation on takeoff, and it's all determined and all related to the CG and the landing. And on a tail dragger, it's the opposite. Instead of the CG being ahead of the actual main wheel on a tail dragger, like this de Havilland uh, Dragon Rapide, the CG is just behind the main wheel. It's exactly behind the main wheel. That's where the CG is on a tail dragger. It's the opposite. If you have a tricycle landing gear, the CG is just ahead of the main gear. If it's a tail dragger, it's the opposite. The CG is just behind the main gear. Okay, Chris, but does your demon driver CG method apply to like, let's say, MiG-21? Absolutely. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Got the Balalaika fighter jet layout, delta wing, elevator, stabilator, stabilizer, doesn't matter. You take tire, superimpose another tire in front of it, from the center of the hub to the leading edge of that superimposed second tire, draw a line through the center, there's your CG on a big 21. Same thing. Doesn't matter. The Demon Driver CG method is like Occam's Razor. It, Occam's Razor it just cuts right through it. And it works the same way with a Comet 4. Here's the Comet 4, right? Now the Comet 4 basically doesn't really have a swept wing. The leading edge is swept, but the trailing edge is barely swept. In many ways, this, the Comet 4 is a mixture of old world turboprop propeller to an aircraft with jet. And this was the first, so I tip my hat to uh, British friends because this plane is the airliner that started it all. It's the same method.
wheel trucks, four wheels in each, doesn't matter. You take your main wheel, superimpose another wheel truck in front of the first, you draw a line through the strut, that's the CG on a Comet 4. Comet 1, Comet 4C, Comet 4B, 3, it doesn't matter. That's the CG right there. All right, now I'll really, uh, I'll really razzle and dazzle you. Concord, the Demon Driver method of finding your CG is the same with the Concord. Does it matter? Okay. Delta Wing, Elevons, it doesn't matter. It's a tricycle landing gear. The CG and the main gear are intertwined. They have to be, the CG has to be within a very narrow range of that main gear. Again, if it's too far aft, if it's after the main gear, the elevons will never be able to exert enough force to lift the load of the forward section forward of the CG. The plane will never be able to achieve lift. But if the CG is just ahead of the main gear, the main gear of the fulcrum, like a seesaw, the main gear of the fulcrum, that's the key. That's the answer. You, again, you take your main wheel truck, superimpose it ahead of the main wheel truck again. Just superimpose it in front of it. Put one gear truck in front of the other. Draw a line through the strut. And that's the CG of the Concorde. That simple. Well, there you have it, my friends. That is the Demon Driver CG method. Please apply it. Give it a shot. All you need is an existing aircraft that exists in real life that has a determined landing gear, a set of landing gear. I don't care whether it's a BAE-146 or this Condor 990. If you have an established landing gear, the CG can only be within a very narrow range compared to where the landing gear are. Again, the landing gear can't be too far forward and it can't be too far aft. The landing gear acts like the fulcrum on a seesaw. You got your force, you got the load. Okay? So that's how you determine your CG on your swept wing aircraft. Fighter jet, airliner, it doesn't matter. And like I said, the same thing applies to a plane like the de Havilland Dragon Rapide. But it's in reverse because it's a tail dragger. The CG is behind the main wheel, not forward. Tricycle landing gear, the CG is forward of the main gear. Tail dragger, it's behind, but it's right behind. It's not on. See, it's not on the actual tip of the tire, it's on the back side of the tire. That's the CG. Now I know, of course, on a forward non-swept wing, it's two-fifths two of the, you know, 20% of the wing cord. And that's the, uh, that's the standing rule with a straight uh, candy bar styled wing. But again, if you don't want to follow that, that uh, theory, you do the demon driver theory, it's that line right behind the main wheel in a tail dragger, and that's the CG on this, on this uh, Dragon Rapide. Uh, anybody want to take a crack at this? Because I, I don't know what's a... Because uh, I, I, I don't have any idea. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know what to do about this here. This is pretty, uh, this is pretty advanced stuff. This is 80 years in the future, 120 years, something like that. I don't know, 1986, 2086, I don't know. I don't know what this is right here. Let me see. Oh, would you look at that? Oh, there's a little thing inside the... 